Hi everyone. Today we're going to be summarizing the Sumerian literary text Enmer Kar and Ensukheshana or Ensukheshdana or Ensukhirana. You'll see it uh, any number of ways. Uh, it just depends on how you read the Sumerian sign there in the middle of the word, but nonetheless, it's the same story. Um, it's the last, the four stories that we're summarizing that deal with Enmerkar. <clears throat> the first two focused on Lugal Banda. The last two have focused, uh, this one and the one before, focus on Enmerkar and his um, contest or his struggle with the Lord of Arata, who is named in this particular text where he hasn't been before, and um, how the competition comes to a much neater conclusion. Uh, in this text. So let's take a look at it. As a brief overview, Ensuk Kashana, the Lord of Arata, tells Enmer Kar of Uruk to submit. Go figure. Says the main trope in these stories you submit, no, you submit. Remember, Uruk is Enmer Kar's city, and uh, Arata is the, the city off to the, to the east, far to the east, both. <clears throat> uh, claim the patronage of Inanna, and of course, both are struggling for supremacy. It always turns out that Emmerkar wins, but uh, Arata always is left in a good light or in a in a prosperous situation. So um, here we have the Lord of Arata, whose name is Ensuk Kashana, telling Emmerkar of Uruk to submit. Now, a sorcerer. When, when Emir Kar writes back and says, nope, <clears throat> not submitting, a sorcerer, Orgiri uh, Nuna, uh, goes and wreaks havoc on the city of Eresh, which is the home of Nisabo. It's very close to Uruk, but doesn't actually get you know, to Uruk, Uruk. And finally, the wise woman, Sangboru, a um, little misspelling there, who we think is probably the goddess Nisabo herself, defeats and kills the sorcerer. Or Niri Nuna um, for what he's done to the to the city. So setting the scene, what's the the backdrop? Well, and Kashana sends a messenger to Uruk, telling Enmerkar, the king of Uruk, to submit to Arata. No surprise. Enmerkar writes a response on a tablet, which, if you remember from Enmerkar and the Lord of Arata, that was a, a main trope or a central theme. Um, a central um, event in the text, and of course here we see it again um, in not so dramatic a fashion, but he writes on a tablet saying that he will not submit. The assembly at Arata, when the message come ba comes back, um, is somewhat annoyed at Ensuk Kashana, the lord of Arata, for provoking Enmerkar. They say, it's your fault, you started this. Um, and uh, and Sukh Kashana says, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to submit to him. I'm not going to submit to him. Um, I'm going to make him submit to me. Well, the sorcerer, or Niri Nuna, figures, hey, you know what, I've got some power. I can make Enmerkar submit, and so I'm going to go to Uruk and make him make him submit to my master, the Lord of Arata. So and Sukh Kashana is very pleased at this, and he pays him and promises upon uh, his successful return many, many more riches to be heaped up upon him. Well, the sorcerer or Niri Nuna goes to the city of Eresh, which again is very close to Uruk, but not quite to Uruk. And it's the city of the goddess Nisaba. And there he visits the cattle pen and the goat buyer, and he does some interesting things there, magically causes the um, cows to speak and the goats to speak, and he curses them and makes butter and food and all these other things dry up uh, by cursing the cattle or by cursing the, the uh, cows and the, the goats. So because of this, the shepherd and the cow herd uh, complain to the sun god Utu, say, please, you know, help us. And this brings out Sangburu, the wise woman, who again we think is the goddess Nisaba, given a statement that's made at the end of the text. And they have this very interesting conversation, uh, conversation, competition. 
The text is a little bit broken before the competition starts, but it's clear what's happening there. Um, uh, the sorcerer throws in fish spawn into the water, and Songburu throws in fish spawn after. Um, and whatever comes out of the water first by the, by the magical power of the sorcerer is countered and... Um, yeah, is countered by and over overpowered by the thing that comes out of the water by Sangburu's magic. So, for example, this happens uh, five different times. Uh, the sorcerer throws in fish spawn and the giant carp comes out. Well, Sangburu throws in her fish spawn and an eagle comes out and takes the carp and, you know, kills it. In round two, um, the sorcerer throws in the fish spawn and a ewe and its lamb come out. When Sangburu throws her fish spawn in, a wolf comes out of the water and eats the ewe and the lamb. In the third scene, the cow and the calf come out and are eaten by the lion. An ibex and a wild sheep come out for the sorcerer, and Sangburu makes a mountain leopard come out, which kills them. And then finally, a gazelle kid comes out from the sorcerer's fish spawn, but a tiger and lion uh, come out by Sangburu's hand and kill the gazelle kid. Well, it becomes clear that the sorcerer is completely bested and he begs for mercy saying, please let me return. Let me just go home. Let me take my toys and go home. Please don't kill me. Um, and Sangburu says, no, you know, you've, uh, you've, you've done wrong and you've done terrible things to the, um, to my city. And, uh, Justice calls for you to die, and so she kills him. The end of the story, uh, no surprise, and so Kashana gets word of this and sends a message to Enmer Kar and basically says, I'm really sorry, you know, you're 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 the best. He rolls over and says, You are supreme, and Anna is with you, um, and uh, we we will submit to you uh, because of your of your greatness as king of Uruk. So this is it. Uh, last of the four stories, and uh, just a quick recap before we close. Uh, the first two de deal with this. Um, you know, all all of the stories center on, in some way or another, this competition, this battle between um, Uruk and Arata for supremacy. In the first two stories, Lugalbanda in the mountain cave and Lugalbanda and the Anzu bird, it, it, the story shifts. Its focus, uh, sort of leaving the, in general, leaving the uh, competition between the two cities in the background, in a, in a way, and focusing on Lugal Banda, who has a near-death experience in the mountain cave and ultimately has a holy, pious um, servant of the gods is brought back to full health and is blessed by the Anzu bird with great strength and speed to uh, go and help Uruk secure a victory over Arata. In the third story, Enmerkar and the Lord of Arata, we see this struggle, competition, back and forth, these, um, these um, challenges that go back and forth, and Enmerkar being wise and getting help from the gods solves and shows himself superior in all of these competitions and ultimately invents writing and um, gets the best of, of Arata. And finally, here in the story that we've just summarized, Emmerkarn and Sukha Kashana, you see uh, Enmerkar coming out on top again, but not through direct uh, action. I, I would say it's um, it's more apparent that, um, or certainly the focus is more that the gods are on his side and stand with him. And uh, through this competition with um, and Sukha Kashana's sorcerer, and um, the goddess Nisaba, or the wise woman Songburu, uh, you see that Uruk comes out on top, and um, supremacy is is granted there. If you want a great uh, recent publication on this, and um, you know, so you see so many of these ideas in the, and it's a short, short, easy read. Uh, there's a publication. I'll put it in the in the um, description below by Klaus Vilka, brilliant Assyriologist, 
and um, it's a recent a short text, uh, sorry, short monograph uh, about this particular um, Sumerian story, the Sumerian literary text with um, a full edition, um, a um, transliteration score, and some commentary on it. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.